the last thing I remembered before waking up was a very painful feeling. I think that I was driving home on the highway from my boring office job. I decided to go home early because my boss was really getting on my nerves. I reached for my drink and the next thing I know, there was a loud crash and the metal of my car warped like it was nothing. The glass shattered into millions of pieces and the fabric was ripped apart. I felt a great pain as my vision blurred greatly. I barely managed to look out of my broken door of my warped car. I saw another vehicle with two people inside of it. I reached out before passing out completely. I vaguely heard the sound of yelling and sirens. I learned later that I was hit by a drunk driver who was on the wrong side of the road. The next thing I remember is waking up in a great bed. I sat up in bed, covered in sweat as I looked around in a panic. The whole room seemed to be made of stone. It was all the same shade of gray as the bed with no shadows and one door on each wall. The bed was in the middle of the small room. I jumped out of bed and yelled for help before feeling an overwhelming amount of calm. I approached one of the doors and gave a small knock, but it did nothing so I knocked harder. Again, nothing. Nothing happened so I tried pushing the door open, but it still wouldn't budge after I kept hitting and pushing. I heard a door open behind me. As I tried and a young, energetic voice spoke. My good friend, what you are trying won't work. I heard you knocking, however, the man said. I turned around and saw a tall man wearing a white button-up shirt and white dress pants. His long hair and beard were untamed and perfectly black. Where am I? What's going on? Who are you? I panicked, assaulting him with all my questions. Calm down, young one. I know it's all confusing, but stay calm. His voice instantly calmed and filled me with hope. All of your questions will be answered shortly. Just follow me. I did as the man said, following him as he pushed another door open. When the door opened... I heard what sounded like a melody. I couldn't really make it out, but it sounded like a storm with constant banging and crashing. It sounded like it was underneath them. Nevertheless, the door led to another gray room. This time it looked much nicer with no cracks. As well, it had a brown wooden chair and a velvet chair. He sat down in the wooden chair and pointed for me to sit down in the other. I'd been so excited to meet you. Nowadays, every person I meet is an excitement. I will answer some of your questions now. I ignored the storm underneath us and positioned myself in the chair. Where am I? I looked around the room as the man smiled softly. You are in the afterlife. You crossed over. I am Mr. Abe Salvador, but you can call me Abe. I believe you are Jacob Lawrence. Uh, nice to meet you, Abe. Why am I so calm? What are we doing? I didn't understand at all why I was so calm. After all, I had just found out that I wasn't living in... Now I'm talking to some dude in a gray chair. Uh, whatever. You feel calm because you are here right now in this room. Or rather, the group of rooms. As for what I'm doing, I've been waiting for a special person. And you just might be that person. He seemed super happy. And it seemed to make me happy as well. So, are you an angel or are you? I mean, you know, the man upstairs. 
I anticipated the answer to this question, but deep in my body, I felt terror and fear. Excellent question, young one. I am not an angel. I am the creator, God and all-powerful. I made everything you ever saw. I controlled everything from behind the scenes. Well, it's a funny thing. I control almost everything. He stopped talking, waiting for me to ask him further. Well, what do you not control? I stuttered as he waited for me to ask this exact question, as his smile never faded. In fact, it grew wider. You, my young one, I control the weather, the earth, the stars, but I can't control what you do, neither on earth or here. Of course, I can stop you just as much as any human could on earth, but I can't make you do anything. I thought it was very interesting. However, his smile has grown to just plain unnerving. Now then, anything else? He asked. Nothing else I wanted to know came to mind. I didn't know what I had in store, but I had to be ready for it. Sure. He stands up as I do, and he led me to a wall. He put his hand on the wall, and he looked over before winking at me. The wall warped into a staircase made of gray and white marble. When I first arrived, I didn't realize some of my senses were missing before this. I heard the storm louder than before as well as the banging. It smelled heavily of dust and tears. I even tasted dust in the air. Um, Abe, where are we going? I said as I walked behind him. We are going to see your fate. What happens after you pass? He spoke with no hint of joy at all. And we walked for a very long time before we reached the bottom of the stairs. But what I saw rocked me to my very core. We were standing on a balcony that saw the source of the noise. It wasn't a storm. I saw what looked like everybody who had ever lived. All of them cried out as they built a kingdom of silver and gold. But they no longer looked human. They had gray, leathery skin and wore nothing but black garments. Their eyes were missing as they cried out in pain from building an endless kingdom. I stammered for a second as Abe looked at it all. This is my kingdom, child. You have a choice to accept me. I know you will. If you do, you can become an angel and live with me. He turned and put a hand on my shoulder. He looked with anticipation. I whimpered. What is this? You're not our creator. You're a monster. I scrambled to get away as his face changed to one of absolute rage and disappointment. I tried running up the staircase, but the corridor closed as if there was nothing there. That's harsh, child. He grabbed my shoulders and looked me in the eyes. His eyes were dead and empty. His eyes were there, but there was no emotion. Why would you do this? How long have they been working for? I yelled at him. They build my kingdom forever. From when they pass to forever, it won't end. But I'm surprised. His voice calmed, but he was still clearly mad. I gave you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to become an angel. Not very many people get that option. And you decline. You disrespect me. He began to yell again. He reminded me of an angry father. I felt the same way of when my dad found out that I broke a window on his work car. Man, that was a fun day. I jerked my shoulders and slipped out of his grip. I'm not sure what my idea was, but to be fair, what was I supposed to do? I punched him across the face. Of course, it didn't do anything except make him angrier. Really? I mean really? Let's do this somewhere else. He whistled, seeming to call something. 
I heard screeching from the air. The angels will take you. Abe simply walked into the solid wall as three angels arrived. But they were the worst. These things weren't having any beings dressed in white with nice wings. They were completely white with leathered skin and wings that looked warped and gross. The legs were short and twisted while their arms were long and muscular. It looked like things were poking and jabbing under their skin and their joints had gray spikes stabbing out of them. All of them looked like hunchbacks as well. But their heads... They lacked any sense of being alive at all. All I saw in their eyes were a desire to hurt. They had many eyes in the front of their face with gaping jaws that revealed an empty black pit of a mouth. They had no nose and tree-like horns poking out from the top of their heads. One of them screeched at me, opening its mouth wider than I've ever seen any animal. I decided anything was better than these guys, so I jumped off the balcony, plummeting down. But they swooped on and grabbed me, all the while making noises that should have come from demons and not angels. And Abe just wanted me to become one of these things. He's insane. Their grip on me was very strong, and they flew me to one of the buildings deep into the city of gold. They reached a small gray building in the center of the very large town. They landed and two of them let me go, and walked towards the building. It was made of granite with two rusted gates that took the other two angels to open it. It led to a stairway that they carried me down. It smelled of burning and rotten meat. Everything seemed to be silent except for these steps of the angels. After what felt like hours of going downstairs, we reached a small room with a wooden desk. Abe was there, sipping a drink. What the? He interrupted me. He didn't have manners, did he? Why do you think I made humans? He didn't look at me, staying turned around, sipping his drink. What? I don't know. What are you going to do? He ignored my question. I made you to give me fuel. After you pass, you come here and I take your souls to give me the energy I used to make them. Unless you're an angel. He turned around and walked towards me. I give you a chance, but you threw it away. And now, I'm going to make you suffer for it. He smiled. Why would I want to help you? You're a monster. I yelled at him. He punched me in the gut, hurting me much more than I did to him. Since when was I not a monster? I cause storms. I destroy lives. I've even tampered in the human mind to make certain people certain ways. But I made you. He grabbed my face and gritted his teeth. You are nothing but play toys for me. I gave you a special chance. No one gets to be an angel, but I thought that you were different. I guess not, he whispered. He grabbed a knife from his desk. Wait, no, you can't do this. I'm sorry, I'll do anything. I begged him. I can do anything I want. He made a large cut on my cheek. As he spoke, a whole array of senses entered my mind as I faded away. It felt like I woke up, but I was in a hospital bed. They told me that I had been gone for two minutes, but they somehow had managed to save me. I still had that cut on my face, and I asked the doctors and nurses about it. They said that it wasn't caused by the crash, and they didn't know how it even got there. I know about what will happen after we all pass. 
Abe will be waiting for everyone when we come, and we will build his kingdom. I don't know much about it, but I know three things. If you have the chance to become an angel, accept it. Live life good, and don't take anything for granted. And I know heaven isn't what everyone expected.